Are you wondering what's going on in the crazy real estate market right now in Halifax? Stay tuned because four realtors are having a chat you don't want to miss. Hi, I'm Brenda Kay with the Halifax Home Selling Group and this is the Sweet Miss Frankie. Thank you so much for tuning into our channel. Please hit subscribe if you like it and you'll get a new one every Thursday. So what's going on? It is nuts out there. Listen to four of us having a discussion and I'll be back as soon as we're finished. Hey, it's Sandra Pike from Royal Page Atlantic and the Pike Group, and this is our monthly chat session. And there's lots of hot topic uh, topics out there in Halifax, especially about the real estate market and buyers, what they're experiencing. And uh, so that's what we're going to talk a lot about today. So, but before we get into that, if I could get our panel to introduce themselves, that would be awesome. Hi there, it's Ian Angus, uh, also from Royal Page Atlantic. Good afternoon. I'm hey. Richard Payne from Halifax Homes and Lifestyles at EXP Realty. Hey, Brenda Kay here from Brenda Kay's Halifax Home Selling Group. Hello, everyone. Now, take off the glasses now because I'm getting the glare. But <laughs> um, so the market has been crazy. And um, so I know I sent a, a bunch of uh, questions beforehand. But I'd like to get your opinions. Um, do you think, um, uh, Ian, that buyers now are overpaying for the houses that they're purchasing? Because uh, I think when uh, we looked at stats yesterday, uh, between November and February, there were, what, 2,400 homes that sold and 1,500 of them either went uh, at ask or over list. So would you say people are overpaying there? What are your thoughts? I think in some instances people are overpaying, but I think in general our market itself and HRM has been undervalued for a while mm -hmm. and people are just finally realizing that, you know, they have to pay top dollar now because of the lack of inventory and the competition that's out there. So, yeah, I, I do think some people are paying an exorbitant amount of money for certain properties. But in general, I think, you know, we're still shy of that $400,000 average home price or right around there. And if we compare that across the country, it's still very reasonable. Mm -hmm. uh, how about yourself, Ian? Uh, what will your thoughts be? Ian? Sorry? I don't know if, uh, oh, sorry, Ian. Oh, sorry, I apologize. <laughs> Richard, what are your thoughts? My apologies, Ian. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, it's it's kind of the same thing. Um, you know, you look at how the inventory has been, and we know that everybody's been saying Halifax has been pretty underpriced for quite a while. We're finally catching up, but like we are catching up and we've caught up quickly. So I think mm -hmm. the key thing we're all hoping for is a little bit of a flat line in pricing once we kind of get past that spring and get into the summer market, it'd be good just to see just a little slowdown. Like, you know, let's not keep going up by the five, six percent a month that we're getting at the moment. Let's just kind of like slow down and let's just flatline a little bit just to put a bit of steadiness in our market as opposed to climbing up by, I think we're at like 34% on this time last year. I mean, in one year, that's a huge increase on an average price. Mm -hmm. And what would your thoughts be, Brenda? Well, my thoughts are, you know, as we know, you know, what we do with people is we're giving them advice in a relationship of agency. And you're kind of between a rock and a hard place because some of the buyers are desperate. You know, they've, they've written five, six, seven offers. They're not getting the house. But at, at the same time, I have to look at them and say, look, if anything changed in your life, in the next 12 months, you know, you could be in serious financial trouble. So it's really hard to kind of keep that balance. And, and again, you know, the chicken or the egg, people want to sell, but they're afraid they can't find something to buy. So I mean, we, we have less than 500 uh, active listings in Halifax. We're normally at this time of the year, three years running, we're at 1200 plus. So that, that's a concern for me is making sure I give the right advice. Yeah, I mean, uh, when I've looked at the market, 
um, you know, first in order to win, I, can, I would say since the pandemic. Um, but I'm going to state something now, and it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts on this before I get down that path. I feel that the trend of this market that we're in started at the end of 2017, that stale product that was on the market was finally selling. And then when it came to, I remember listing properties January, 2018, I'm thinking in my head, yeah, I'll sell this in June, but it actually sold within a few weeks. And that was in January, 2018. So uh, based on my experience, that's when I feel our trend actually started. Uh, what do you guys think? Have you experienced the same thing? I agree with that. I found, I found even before COVID last year, I found in November, end of October, November, we were hitting the seller's market in, 2000, in the fall of 2019, no question. A lot of people think it's right now because of COVID and because of everything, but we were on this trend. I agree, Sandra. Yeah, what do you guys think? Yeah, it's kind of the same thing that I saw. I mean, you know, I do stats every single month and, you know, I, even now I start looking at like, okay, let's go back to 2019. And as Brenda was saying, really, the, the kind of trend in the downward amount of months of inventory, which is going towards the seller's market, you look at that and you can trace it right back to almost like spring 2019 is when it went, oh, like, hang on a minute, this is the first month, probably for about quite a few years, where we've dipped underneath five months of inventory and less than five is sellers. And yeah, you know, four and a half months, three months, you're like, yeah, it's seller's market, but it's not that strong. Right now, we're at 0.6 months of inventory. And since... February last year, we've been one month or less. So if you look at that and say, great, if we sell the same homes in February, in March, and list no new homes, we're done in 0.6 of a month. There are no homes to buy. So that's 2019. What we've seen over the last 12 months is the price increase that's come with it. Because, yeah, three, four months, you can kind of keep stable on the pricing. Once you get down to less than a month of inventory, yeah supply and demand prices are going to go up and they're going to go up a lot. So Ian, I'm going to ask you a bit of a different question. So uh, again, so we've all seen this trend coming. Um, what do you think is the, is the cause of the trend just because people never really saw the value in Halifax, but how about the people who were here locally? Uh, you know, uh, were they not seeing the value in the homes? Like, is it us, the realtors who, who's been causing this spike? Like what, why do you think we are where we are now if it was starting and is not a result of COVID? I think, I think people, like I said earlier, have undervalued the market here because I see a lot of chat on Facebook pages and stuff locally in the area that I specifically deal in. And uh, they're all like, oh, I can't believe these houses are going for the, the price. So they, they feel that the houses are going way over what they should be going or what the value is. Mm-hmm. But in the same breath, I don't think this is this trend is going to change anytime soon. I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. Because once the COVID thing is over or everyone has their vaccinations, there's going to be, you know, we're going to open the country back up again. There's going to be more immigration and people are learning that they don't need to go to their office building to do their work. They can work from home and you know, Halifax is still affordable. We're still less than half of what the average price of a home is in the GTA or in Vancouver, which is even higher. Um, so the benefit here, it's always been here. It's just people are figuring it out now. So, yeah. uh, Brenda, I'm going to ask a really political question. Uh, question. Um, so we have a lot of less inventory. And, uh, you know, again, I'm, I remember looking at some stats as well. You, you know, in 2018 at this time, there were 21 homes on the market. So while there were, let's say, 500 listings uh, in uh, areas one through 40, there is less than 400 homes right in Metro itself that, that, that is on the market. Would you say that the city has anything to do with this? Would you say that, you know, the city permits maybe for new construction if there were more new starts, would we have been in this pandemic, uh, you know, the, the crisis of housing, you know, where, what else has been factors that have been leading up to this? 
Yeah. I, you know, we, and you're right, it is political and, and, you know, I don't want to show any disrespect to, to no, any, anywhere in, in, in the municipality, but, you know, Halifax does have a, a um, reputation for being very slow on projects to get them through the system. I mean, we've all read about it. It can be anywhere from two to seven years to get it. And there is a real shortage of land in right around the Halifax Dartmouth. And then when we talk in a few minutes, I'll, I'll talk about the new construction. You really see that, you know, there's, there's one development in all of Dartmouth right now. Some of the biggest developers are going to Enfield. You know, yeah. can we get people through this process quicker in the city? And I think- but you can in Enfield, right? Yeah. Huh. Well, we had that in our meeting yesterday, Sandra. I don't know if you were on there, but one of our agents that's uh, representing a development out in Enfield stated that they walk into the Enfield, you know, community offices with their plans and they walk out with the permit. Whereas trying to do that in Halifax, mm -hmm. it's weeks, months. You know, Seven years. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it, it can be years. I yeah. think the only record worse than ours is Calgary in Canada. That's not good. Wow. Well, going back to that infield, I had the same conversation with a builder where his expectation was walked in, dropped all the plans off and said, okay, like, you know, when will it be ready? The guy who was the development officer looked at his watch and said, well, where are you going for lunch? And he said, uh, where do you want me to go for lunch? He's like, well, be quick because this will be back in my desk by 1 p.m. this afternoon. And he's like, really? So yeah, I think I think you're right. I think you start looking outside of the HRM, and I think we'll start seeing more developments cropping up literally just outside HRM. So you can keep that commute to Halifax down to like 45 minutes or less. It's it's going to start showing up a lot more, and people will start moving there because it's 45 minutes or less commute if you want to be in Halifax. Yeah, and the people that are coming from back from Ontario or out west, they're already used to terrible commutes. So, oh, you have to do a 45 minute commute on the highway with not a lot of traffic. They're going to be like, that's no brainer. Yeah. 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 I, so, I sold, go I ahead, Brenda. Sorry. I was going to say, I sold an, uh, someone that was relocating here from Ontario and they actually went in the Windsor area. And when I made a comment about the drive, it was, they were like, hey, look, there's like no drive. I mean, they're so, they, she told me they normally spend three hours a day on the road. Wow. Wow. There's nothing far in Ontario, right? Uh, people are just used to driving from Oshawa to downtown. For, I couldn't imagine, yeah. uh, you know, having to do that. Um, so here's another one when you talk about is the government helping this? Um, there's an advert running in Ottawa at the moment by Nova Scotia Business Incorporated um, trying to get people literally to move because they can work from home, come and be an entrepreneur in Halifax as opposed to Ottawa come and enjoy everything that Nova Scotia has to offer. So you've got Nova Scotia Business Incorporated basically sending adverts in Ottawa saying, come to Halifax. So all of a sudden, you know, are we seeing a lot of Ontario people looking at moving to Halifax? Well, they're getting adverts. And that was a friend of mine that said, huh, maybe I should come back to Nova Scotia. And I'm like, why? And they're like, well, here's the advert. And CBC published an article on it to say this is what NSBI is doing. Yeah. Wow. And, Canada, and yet there's no homes. Yeah. And Halifax being voted one of best Canada's best city to work in from home, you know, it, we're getting, I don't know about you guys, but the number of exploratory phone calls that I get now from Toronto. Yeah. Area, to, but um, it is the best place to work from home, isn't it, Brenda? It is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, have you guys noticed a trend that when, let's say, when, I don't know, back a year ago or a year and a half, and maybe it's not a result of the pandemic, but, you know, first you could go, you know, 500 bucks over uh, a property. If you were in competing offers, you'd get it or like 501. And then it jumped to, uh, you know, a thousand. Then it was at 10,000. And then I saw it at, if you want to win an offer, you got to go at least $50,000 over. Then I saw it, I was telling my buyers, uh, it's at 70,000. We wrote an offer uh, the other night on a property in Sackville that was listed at 412. And we wrote an offer 71,000 over asking, didn't even get a look in. Uh, so now when I'm speaking with a buyer, 
And, you know, as it used to be 70, now it's 100. And that's the only way you're getting in. I mean, are you guys experiencing that on offers that you're writing or offers that you're receiving? Absolutely. Yeah. And now what I have to tell my buyers, and I'm sure you guys will agree, I met with a buyer this morning and he told me his budget was 300 to 320. And I said, okay, we're going to shop from 200 to 225. You yes, can't yes. even look at what your budget is, is anymore because no. it's not, you're just wasting time. And, and, and it's almost like a teaser to them. Oh, here, let me show you something at 300. But if you want it, you got to pay 400. I don't yeah. want to do that with buyers. And it's that, it's that level of expectation that we have to kind of manage now. Because like you say, if you're shopping for a 300 budget, we better be looking in low twos. Otherwise, you know, I can't show you something in the 300 range because you know it's going to go for 350, 375. Yep. So it's, you manage the expectation right off the start. Yep. I mean, Ian, would you say, uh, oh, go ahead, my apologies. No, I was just going to mention that, you know, in, in the area that I deal in, you know, you're hard pressed now to find anything under 300 grand. Yep. And that was unheard of. But I mean, small split entry semis, you know, are going for 305. And I couldn't give them away for 200 grand 18 months ago. Wow. So let's say in the past six, or not even six months, let's say since January, would you feel that listing agents are, are, are pricing the properties too low, creating this effect? Oh, if you, I'll start on that one. Um, no, I go in, I presented one this morning. I do it based on the math. And I tell them that this is what works using comparables. And, you know, if, if I get one that's way up here, like I want to price it at fair market value. And what I explain to my clients is the buyers still want to see that. When you, if you underprice it, you risk your clients getting less money. If you overprice it, then buyers look at it and say, oh, they're just gouging me with their house. But if the buyer looks at it and, and ascertains it's fair market value, they'll fight like the devil for it and pay 60,000 over. It just makes Minimum. It make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's that uh, same thing. There's, there's still got to be, as Brenda says, value. You know, you, you can't look at a house that should be 400,000 to say, well, let's put it up 525 and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Like that's, I mean, going back to our realtors potentially causing the problem here, if we start doing that kind of stuff, then we're deliberately causing the market to go way or over where it ever should be. So, you know, as Brenda and Ian, I'm sure yourself do, we all do the same thing, which is here's fair market value. Has fair market value gone up over the last 12 months? Yes. But we're not going to sit there and go crazy. And like you say, undervaluing it, you know, it just creates something craziness in terms of either like 100 offers or even you're just going to sit there going, well, you know, the listing, the, the sellers could potentially look at you and say, I don't think you actually know what you're doing because they, the sellers have already come up with a number in their head. Mm -hmm. You just have to make sure that it's a sensible number. Uh, you know, I was on a listing appointment, uh, I don't know, about, let's say about a month and a half ago. And I said, uh, you know, when I looked at what was around there, like the homes that were brick, garage, newer, were selling for four ninety five hundred, And they wanted to list their house at that 500. And I'm like, well, I said, They're, you're two totally different homes, right? Because the other ones are Again, they're, you know, brick, they're the, uh, yeah, they're brick homes, yada, 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 yada. Then another agent comes in, oh, absolutely, you know, <laughs> listed for over 500. And I, 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 was, I was flabbergasted, right, when I, when I was doing my homework. Um, and then, you know, from what I gather, the house probably sold upwards of uh, 600,000. Like, I, I, that, that, was, uh, that was wild. I mean, giddy up, good for the sellers, right? Yeah. Um, but I was shocked to see the disparity between the prices. Yeah. What, what I've been doing lately over the last three months or so have been coming up with a, a fair market value and then adding like 5% to that. Yep. And coming up with the list price just to, you know, we don't need a hundred people going through no. a property and we don't need to have 40 offers on a property. 
Um, people, you know, will see, like we were discussing earlier today, they'll see something at 300 and their budget is 300 and they'll still want to go see it. They'll want to write an offer with no chance of getting it because their agent, I, I find that a lot of agents and not just new agents, seasoned veterans, everything, don't want to have any conflict with their client at all and don't tell them the truth mm-hmm. saying, if you got a $300,000 budget and that's your max, like we said earlier, you got to be looking in the low twos, maybe the mid twos, you might get lucky, yeah. but you know, let's, we don't, don't look at a house that's 300 grand. If your budget's 300 grand, it's just, yeah. you're just wasting everybody's time. I and, then, go ahead, and then on top of that, they're seeing these houses at 300 grand that are looking a little bit nicer than those ones at 230. And then they're going to compare everything to the one they didn't get. Well, that one had this. Oh, well, yeah, but it also went for 370 grand. So how would you prep your buyer? I tell them right up front that, listen, this is your budget. This is as high as you can go. So we have to look 50, at least $50,000 below that in certain markets. Like if I have clients, I deal with, you know, the under 350 range for the most part. So most of my, that's a very difficult market to be in right now because there's not a lot of stuff that's going under 300. So the people that have that max of 300 are really struggling. There's a lot of competition out there and people are paying, you know, a lot of money just because they're sick and tired of losing out. Um, I talked to one agent from uh, viewpoint who mentioned that I said, how did you come up with the price? He goes, my client looked at all the comps and then added 15% onto what the average price was because his offer was almost identical to another offer. And I'm like, how did you come up with that price? Because it was so much higher than the, the listing price. And that's, that's mm-hmm. what they're doing. So, And you have to watch too that as the realtor, not to get caught up in, oh, I want to win this. You yeah. have to act in the best interest of your client. And even if they're disappointed because they didn't get a particular house, you know, we've all heard back in the day, you know, where the bags of chips got smaller as the price went up. And now it's happening with real estate. You're getting less house for more money. Yeah. I know anytime I'm going out, uh, I looked at a, a house in uh, Eastern Passage on Sunday and I said to my buyer before I even booked it, I said, are you prepared to pay more than $70,000 for this home in the event that you like it. And they're like, absolutely. I'm like, okay, let's go look. But, um, you know, it is setting the expectation, uh, right, with the buyer before you're going to see your property because uh, you're not getting it at list by no means. I had a client message me about two hours ago. Hey, there's a property in Stillwater Lake. Uh, for 485, do you think we could get it? Our budget's 500. Think we can get it for under 500? I'm like, no. no. There's zero chance that that is going to go for under 500,000. Wow. So, guys, a uh, uh, question. So, I'll get you, Richard, to answer this. So, I was talking about, you know, how it, it the prices kept increasing, going, you know, going up. Like it was 50,000 over asking you would get it. Now I'm seeing, or sorry, it was 70 last month. And now a lot of the homes are 100,000 over. Do you see that trend still continuing? And if you do, for how long? I think we're going to see that carry on at least until summer. Like my, my real hope is that we just get more listings coming on the market. We know that, as Brenda said, it's not going to be new construction that's going to come and help out um, just because development's taking too long. So we can... You can't look at new construction to help fill the void and put more listings on. Uh, All you can do is look at people and inquiries that we're getting now to say, okay, who's getting ready in the next four to eight weeks to come up on the market? And, you know, I know that I've got about seven to eight of those coming on in the next four to six weeks. Well, this time last year, I probably had one of those. So I'm like, okay, maybe that's a bit more indicative of more listings coming on. Well, Okay, but equally, we look at the number of buyers and, yeah, the houses that were sold in February were 455. 
that's 120 houses more than February last year. So people are still buying. Um, I really hope that, you know, I, I'm hoping predictions like we'll all take a little round robin bet on what month is it going to slow down. Um, but realistically, at least till I'd say August, September this year, we're going to be in the same market all the way through last quarter of the year. I'm hoping we're going to flatten off because winter, winter will come back. A lot more people hopefully will have had all the COVID injections. So that will take some of that stress off people. 50 to 64 coming. Ask me if I was excited. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think last quarter of the year, I'm hoping yeah. we'll, just, we'll just flatten off a bit and then we'll see what 2022 brings. But I think this year is, is more or less all of this year is going to be the same as last. Um, yeah. And yeah, prices are I'm to surprised to see February go up from January because I thought January was just a bit of a blip when it went up so much from December. Um, and now February went up again, you know, not too much. We're only up 1% on January, but still it went up. And I was like, oh, I thought January was high. So uh, my prediction is that between April and June, it is going to be brutal. Um, yeah. Last year, we didn't have many military relocations. I have five listings right now uh, that they're uh, prepping their properties to get to the market because their posting message is coming in April and they move in July. And uh, so I, and so if, if we have people who are leaving, we definitely have people who are coming into the city. So I think it's going to be, I didn't anticipate this, but I think it's going to be a lot more competitive between April and June. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, and you're going to let all of us three know those listings before they come live, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I had a lady the other day and uh, she's prepping her home to the market. And and then I have buyers that I'm working with. And I called her up and uh, because we're just waiting for her posting message to come in. I said, if you didn't go on MLS, what's the price that you want? And she gave me the price and I called the client and sold it, uh, uh, you know, sold it off the market. Uh, so the clients didn't have to go into competing offers. And so, I mean, I don't know what you guys, but this is the worst time that I've ever had trying to put a price on the home. Yeah. So I'm asking the seller, how much do you want to get? And, uh, and then, you know, uh, I probably did about five private sales last year uh, where I facilitated my buyer and a seller together. Uh, because it is very difficult, right? And I mean, how many times are buyers writing offers that they're not getting accepted? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think we'll see some more. Certainly, like I'm out in Fall River. I know just this month and January, there's been four off-market private deals done by one realtor within her own brokerage where she knew the person was selling. She went to other realtors in her brokerage Somebody had a client that was buying and it was private deals. And those numbers obviously don't show up on MLS, but three of those, I literally fell off my chair when I heard the price that she actually got in a private deal. I was like, that's insane for that price. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's happening off market as well as the stuff that we see on market. Yeah. But it's, uh, you know, it certainly alleviates the pain from having to prep your house. And um, I mean, I still think that there's a buyer expectation depending, um, you know, where the property uh, or the price point. But um, do you feel, anybody can answer this question, do you feel it's a seller's market that it's even all around Metro or just certain pockets of town are just crazy? I think it's everywhere. everywhere. Um, we, spend, we spend most of our spare time in the Tatamagush area. Uh, River John area. There's a, I was talking to Richard who is, does just farms. That's all he does. And we were chatting a couple of weeks ago. He normally at this time of year will have about 20, 25 firms coming on the market. He has one. So they, like he has a lineup of people waiting to, and he's never in all his years ever had that many people looking. He's had calls from as far away as Switzerland. Cool. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, so that we, we seem to be getting that. Like I used to say, I like you said, Ian, I used to say, okay, Halifax is the, the last frontier of affordable real estate in a major port city in Canada. Well, it's here now. Yeah. You got it's it. Here now. Yeah. 
And so, yes, I do. I, I see it up, up out there with the agents that I've talked to. Yeah. Yeah. And the same you thing know, when I, I talk to guys South Shore and Annapolis, mm -hmm. they're, they're basically the same. Because I'm like, oh, yeah, I've got a claim. I'm going to refer them down to you. You know, it should be fairly easy. This is what they need. And the agent just starts laughing at me on the other end of the phone going, so did you say easy? I'm like, South Shore, Annapolis, no problem. And he's like, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So they're seeing it as well. Yeah. Uh, I would say this is probably the hardest uh, a lot of us ever worked in real estate now, uh, you know, navigating your seller. Uh, and especially for buyer agents now, it's uh, it's a very difficult time, right? Because it's just a, it's a lot more work because uh, usually you can go see 10 houses in a day. Now you might see 10 houses in a month because there's you know what I mean? You're you're more on the road. And uh, you're certainly doing a lot more negotiating and working for your clients. So it's uh, it's uh, hard times, I think, out there uh, for everybody involved. So Ian, and, uh, any final? Oh, go ahead, Brenda. I was going to say, you know, uh, all the listing appointments that I've gone on in the last month, and, and like I said, exactly the same thing this morning is they all want to sell. They want to move. They want to, you know, whether it's for school or upsizing or whatever, but they're terrified to put their house on the market because they could be homeless. Yeah. yeah. And the option of, well, it's okay. Put your house in the market, ask for a later closing date because we'll buy you a new house. It's a new build. That's not an option though. Because like, yeah, when, when's your new build available? Uh, January, 2022. Yeah. Wow. When I meet with the clients, I'm asking them, you know, okay, so plan A is to sell your home and buy another one. What's your plan B? Do you have a plan B and a plan C? Can you live with someone? Can you find a rental, which we all know is, is as difficult as finding a house these days? So I set the expectation right there at the beginning. If we're going to sell the house, yes, we can ask for a longer closing, but if we don't find you a property, do you have another option? And if they don't, then, you know, we leave it up to the client to determine if they're willing to take that risk. Yeah. That's yeah. What I I'm not trying to push anyone into doing something that's going to make them end up homeless because that's just not good for anybody. No, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Well, guys, okay, this is great. We'll just go and stay in Brenda's basement. <laughs> yes, we could. <laughs> I don't have a basement. <laughs> so build a basement. No, but you're welcome to come stay. Oh, My parents have funny. a big basement. They can, they can. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, guys. All right. Nice to meet you, yeah. Sandra. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Have a Cheers. great afternoon, guys. So, as you've heard, it's really hard right now to figure out what's going on. But the one thing that we do know what's going on it's trending up what is this a perfect market for sellers that don't have to buy empty nester baby boomers i put a link below to the ultimate home selling guide pdf take a browse through if you have any questions we're always here to answer any of them i'm brenda k this is the sweet miss frankie cheers